our management trustee, which is Satish B. Mudiani, Dr. Kar, Dr. Pasi, Yoselin Ko, Dr. Hamija, and dear friends. Frankly speaking, I have no words to express my gratitude to the chairman CBSC. Such a busy schedule following up. He is busy in some parliament issues, some CBSC issues. And then too, he took out the time to come to this conference starting early in the morning, maybe 4 o'clock because 6 o'clock was the flight's time and maybe uh, finishing up with the meeting around 11 o'clock in the night. We welcome you, sir, and we thank you for your kind gesture, gracing the occasion, gracing the conference and to Ram, sir, also. Friends, giving introduction is something which is very customary. While giving introduction, we read out various achievements and philosophies. But there are certain qualities which I feel I have observed in the chairman when I first met him three, four years back. In management, I learned that there are two types of leaders. One is the imposed leaders. You know, principles are always imposed leaders because they get power by force. And there are some natural leaders. And it will not be exaggerating if I say that Chairman CPSC is a natural leader. It's not an imposed. Leader. I have never seen person working on such a post who is very easily accessible, who is ready to talk at any time on telephone. You can mail him any issues you have and he, when he is amongst you, you don't feel his presence as a chairman of CPS. And these qualities make a person great. We are really very honored, sir, to have you here in this conference. And as I said, that reading the profile is a customary for any guest. I read it. Mr. Joshi is deeply involved in the school reforms. We all belong to CPSC family. And the changes which are brought in by CPSC and the changes which we have seen in the educational scenario, I don't think they need to be discussed. It's his vision, it's his philosophy that is transforming the Indian education system <coughs> into more ethical and professional way, more child-centeredness is coming, more flexibility is coming. And I am confident that in coming years, the whole system will be transformed with a lot of freedom to do experimentation in the classroom, whether it's assessment reforms we talk about or it is the classroom transition we talk about. He has brought a lot many changes and one of the biggest is the CCE. Talking about CCE in terms of CBSCA, it's not the continuous and comprehensive examination, it is continuous and comprehensive evaluation. The spirit behind is evaluation, not conducting examination. The changes he has brought, where we can go for more reliable, authentic, and valid assessment of students, school-based examination in class 12, de-stressing students, grades, grades are introduced, again de-stressing students, 
these are such reforms and many more to come are into his credit. He has introduced lot many new vocational subjects, hospitality management, health management, the recent one, financial management, mass media design, to give direction, in the last two days we have been uh, talking about the goal, aim, direction, giving direction to the students. These are the directions given to the students that life exists beyond preparing for IITs and IIMs. All those who are not getting into IIMs or IITs, they are still alive and enjoying life. So the credit goes to uh, the Honorable Chairman. CBSC being the national board, presents present in almost uh, every part, every part of the continent. He has come up with an innovative syllabus of CBSC I. I, I hope you must be aware of. This was started two years back in Gulf area and some South Asian countries. Now it will be introduced in India. Again, the students, the society will get an opportunity to learn, to study the global standards along with the Indian values and the Indian culture. These are the reforms which he has done at CBSC level. Being a graduate of IIT Kanpur and post graduation from IIT New Delhi, bagging gold medal, tells the rest of the story where he is going to stop. Not only this, he has also played table tennis during his college years. His earlier tenure has been with the Ministry of State for Culture, Youth Affairs and Sports as Deputy Secretary in Department of Women and Child Development, Ministry of Human Resource Development and as Deputy Commissioner in the Government of Manipur. A multifaceted personality, Mr. Joshi has been a harbinger, a change maker and has initiated systematic reform as well as sustainable change in every organization that he has been part of. It is under his able guidance and effective leadership that CBSC has taken such giant strides in recent past which will greatly impact the school education scenario in future. We wish him all the bright future and welcome him heartily for being on us today. We welcome you sir. Thank you. A very good morning to all of you, uh, distinguished principals from different parts of the country, Mr. Satish Bodhiani, Mr. Avasti, Dr. Pasi, Dr. Dhar, Ms. Josephine, from SCER, Ms. Ratna Tamija, other invitees and there is a gentleman. It's always a privilege as well as a challenge to meet a gathering like this. Privilege in the sense that it is it's, it's extremely difficult to meet such a large number of principles and all of us, at least I am definitely, I was when I was in school was scared of my principles. So having so many principles in front of me is really a big challenge. It's also a challenge because all of you know what's happening. All of you know that what is going on well, what is not going on that well. So I really don't know what to speak. If I say that these are things which are happening, you say it's available, it's available on the website. 
if I say that these things are not happening properly, you will say yes, we know it is not happening. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, it's very difficult for me, please believe me, I am sharing my real thoughts that it's extremely difficult to address a gathering like this. And therefore while coming on the way I was talking to Mr. Patnak, I said that what is that you expect? What is that one should be talking? And the same question I asked Mr. Atmanamija here as to what is happening here? <laughs> she said it's about assessments. Then I quickly jotted down a number of points. I'm not going to go over that. And I think I'll begin by saying that uh, assessments are the, the biggest, uh, the most powerful tools that an education system has got to influence teaching and learning inside the classroom. It's also a very important tool for the parent to know how his or her children are doing. And many a times if parents are very ambitious, very pushing, it's a tool to, for them to know how well they are doing. I met a parent few days back who was helping his daughter and the son. He said that I got A in the subject which I taught to my daughter while I got only B in the subject which I taught to my son. So it's an important tool for the parents also to know as to how, not only how their boards are doing in the schools, but how they are also themselves doing. What I am trying to say is that it is an extremely important tool for all of us, for everyone, be it the education administrators, or the teachers, or the principals, or the management, or the parents, or the students. For everyone it is an extremely important tool for getting the feedback. And a journey without any benchmarks without any feedbacks, I think that becomes very monotonous. You lose your motivation. So it's, it's a great motivator also. All that we have to do and, and that we are wanting to do also is that we give feedback, an honest feedback and in a positive way. When I say this, I am reminded of a Sanskrit saying which, says, which said that Satyam Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat, Na Bruyat Satyam Priyam, Priyam Cha Na Nirdam Bruyat, Esh Dharma Samasanadana. Means one should be speaking the truth, but not speak the truth which is hurting someone else. Also don't speak a lie which is pleasing someone else. I think this sums up the way we should be giving the feedback to the students or to the parents and similarly to the teacher also. And this has been one of the major shift of the way we were giving the feedback as a system in the board to the students when we are talking of classes of group 10. Earlier, when the board exams were there, when there were only board examinations, one very dry feedback which did not mean anything in terms of marks or grades were being given. And you were not able to make out as to what exactly it means. All that as a child at least I could understand that if the maximum marks were 100, all that one could make out, yes, you got the maximum mark. How much a 100 means or how much within that continuum of 100, 95 or 99 mean at least I have not been able to decipher what is the difference between 95 and 100. Does the person who is getting 100% knows 100% of the subject or the one who is getting 95% knowing 95% of the subject or 50% knowing 50% of the subject. As against that, in the other system which we have started uh, since last two and a half years, in the form of 
continuous and comprehensive evaluation. We are expecting the system to give a larger feed feedback, a more meaningful feedback to the students so that they can improve. An idea there is that every individual is important, every individual is unique. So therefore the opportunities have to exist for everyone. The examinations, since they are being used for giving the feedback to the system, if you have an examination which is catering to only one type of students or which is trying to inculcate only one type of capabilities, it may not be the best of the examination system. So therefore we shifted from a one short three hour examination assessing only academic skills to a continuous and comprehensive evaluation. And all of us we realize the importance of it. I am, I am not going to go into what is the importance of it, why we should be doing it, I think all of us realize. But once it comes to implementing it in the system, then all of us somehow feel that there are a lot of challenges. Challenges are, some of the challenges are within the system in the sense that there are big classrooms, the classroom sizes are very big. Then there are challenges of teacher empowerment, the teachers are not adequately equipped. But the most important challenge there is the willingness, the willingness on part of the school leaders to implement this. And why I am saying this willingness? Because in this journey, which we have already started two years back, if suppose someone implements it properly, someone does not, and if there are going to be comparisons, and then the leaders, suppose I have done some assessment in my school, I have done it properly, and there is another school who has not done it properly. And if I compare those two schools, I am going to take this feedback that the schools who are not being, not implementing this properly, their students are doing better at least on paper as compared to my school, then why should I be doing this? Is there any good in that? I think with this, one more message that we are wanting to give to the schools, the students is that in this change system, you have got to now not compare yourself with the other school. Compare it with yourself only. And the same message should go to the child also. That once we have shifted from an external year and examination to continuous and competency evaluation, if we still keep on comparing with others, we are going to get a distorted view of these reforms. For a school, if it compares with itself, if today it has got certain number of students who have come, who got a very high rate in different subject areas as well as post plastic areas. The school should be trying that the next year more such students are getting their grade. In fact, to share with you an interesting statistics that every all the schools thought, including ourselves in the board, that once the assessments are decentralized and they are at the school level, the teachers are going to to cheat in the sense that they are going to give grades, the highest grades to everyone. And I think that is what is the perception of every principal about the other school. You, you, if I ask here also, everyone will say that in our school things are happening properly, but it is some other school who is not doing, who is not implementing the system properly. And the same story it is there whether you go to the north, south, east, west, northeast, Everywhere you listen to the same sort of a perception. So we sat down in the board to see as to is something wrong happening. 
and if there is, if, if the wrong is happening, there is this. So we did a small exercise of finding out in the scholastic areas as to how many schools are there who have given, let's say, to their students grades A in all five subjects and the number of such schools we wanted to find out where such percentage is more than 20 percent. We thought up to 20 percent is fine but are there some schools who are giving more than 20 percent. And the number which we got across the country was about 123. Out of 13,000 schools which are existing in the country which in terms of percentage terms, it comes to around 1% or so, which is not a big number. And when we compared it with the previous year's data, it was around that number only. Even then the system was a different system. So what I am trying to convey is that because the assessments have been decentralized, there is a feeling that while I am doing my job well, it is the neighbor next door or the school next door who is cheating, so therefore the system is not working. But if you see at the, at the level of the country, at the aggregated level, the problem is not there. And for that, I would like to give credit to the schools, their teachers, their principals, that they have been able to implement the scheme properly. All that we need to do now is to remove this perception and so that there is more genuine motivation in doing one's own work that the other school is not doing it properly, they are just giving grades just like that. Another exercise that we did because there was also a wrong, at least this perception also existed, that this scheme of upgradation because of uh, this, uh, uh, on account of of good performance in the post-scholastic areas, upgradations were allowed in the scholastic subjects up to in, in two subjects depending on the performance bands in the post-scholastic areas. And there also the situation is not bad. I don't remember the figures but it is, I think again, if, I, if I see in the percentage terms, it's again not more than 2% or so which is happening in the schools, in the numbers. So that way, across the country on a systems level at the level of the CBSC, the situation is not bad. But it is possible, I am not, at a certain schools level, things might not be happening properly for two reasons. One is that the school is not able to understand how to do the things or the other reason could be which all of us are feeling that this other school is doing, that they are deliberately indulging into these practices. We are trying to find out, we are trying to to find out the schools where these things are happening. We are examining the data of such schools of the uh, during the last five years how these schools have done so that we go deeper into their assessments and then bring out the changes. But to this gathering I would like to inform that this fear or this perception that across the country the system, the, the system is not working and everybody is just going berserk in giving the uh, marks or the grades because now most of the things are being done at the school level is strong. It is not supported by the data that the CBSC has got. And as you are also aware that we have other mechanism also to ensure that all that is happening happen, it happens as per the letter and spirit of the scheme. One is that uh, the scheme of mentoring and monitoring, which I am told that somehow for whatever reasons the mentoring scheme is now not working in this, we would like to see that it takes the same uh, uh, momentum which it took about a year back or so. So we would have some separate meeting of the mentors to ensure that this scheme becomes a part of the system. Because on part of CBSE, we would not like to create a situation in which we have to go to every school which is physically impossible also to go to the school and to find out the mistakes. The mentoring and monitoring scheme is to give an opportunity to the schools to learn from each other. There is no concept of superiority or inferiority there. Everyone there is equal. They are just learning. 
if I am a mentor of a school, and I am a mentee too of some other mentor, so that concept has to be understood. Uh, somehow, I think that because of a lot of competitiveness or a lot of uh, fear that you know this might lead to, if I am not able to do well, it might lead to uh, some complaint going there to the CBSC because of which it might affect my affiliation standard, etc. It is not at all the case. We have clarified in the beginning only that this is a purely academic exercise. We realize that these are the initial years. There are going to be the schools who are genuinely doing it in a way which is not proper and they will learn with time. So let's, let's not be scared of someone else coming to our schools and looking at our records, looking at our practices, we will only learn from them. So I think this, we should be able to open the doors of our schools to anyone who wants to visit. This uh, will also fit into the scheme which I said earlier that if, if, we, if we shift our focus for, from competing with other schools to competing with ourselves, I think we automatically be welcoming the other schools to come in. And India as a culture, we have been really welcome guests. So I don't know why the when the principal comes as a guest, she is unwelcome. So I hope that we have this scheme. Um, uh, we will also from our side try to push it. But those mentors who are present here would uh, again uh, go back to their mentee schools and will write to the mentee schools again that they should be taking this scheme in a proper way. Another uh, thing that we are going to ensure that the systems are working is collection of evidences of assessments. That after the assessments have been done, we collect the random samples of assessments from the schools in different subjects and then analyze it at our level. What we have not been doing, which we have to do, is that we are not giving the feedback to the schools who have done well. We are giving the feedback to the schools who are not doing well, but the schools who are doing well, who are doing as per the scheme of things, they are also not getting the feedback. We realize this mistake and we are going to write to the schools that we have analyzed your assessment, they were done in a proper way, or if there is some mistake, we will mention those. But we, we, we will be continuing with that and not only we will be continuing with that, we will increase the frequency of those uh, collection of evidences now they will be collected twice a year. Once after the summative assessment, the first term gets over, that will be the evidences for the first term will be collected. And after the second term gets over, the evidences of the second term will be collected. And same thing we are going to do when we are collecting the data. Earlier we collected the data for the entire year in one go. Now we will be again collecting it over a period of <coughs> six months. And not only will we be collecting the data, we will be giving the feedback to the schools also in time. The third thing that we do is that we declare the results. So before declaring, we do a analysis as to how the school is doing vis-a-vis -vis other schools in the neighborhood areas. And how the students who are appearing in the uh, so-called board conducted examination and the school examination. And as we have found out, now this is the second year work over, that the students who are appearing in both types of schemes, both of them are doing equally good or bad. They are at par. There is no difference between the students who are appearing in the examinations which are done outside the school and the examinations which are done in the school and evaluated in the school. Which is again a very big thing to happen in a system like CBSC, which is a very diverse system. Encouraged with that, we have therefore decided that the option of not appearing in the board examination at the end of class 10, which was till now available to the students who were studying in the schools up to in the in the senior secondary schools, this option will also be available to the students who are studying in the schools which are up to class 10 only. So earlier this scheme was that the students of senior secondary schools were to give this option of appearing or not appearing in the board examinations. But since we realized that there is practically no difference between the two sets of students, we have extended this scheme 
to the secondary schools also. So therefore, the students of the secondary schools will also have this option and this will simplify the scheme. So now the scheme will be that only those students who are wanting to move out of the CBSE system after class 10, they need to appear in the board examinations and others, they need not appear in the board exam. So this is one change that we have implemented and I think most of you who would have seen it in the CBSE's website also. Another thing to improve the system and to continuously give the feedback that we are also doing is that we are analyzing the data which we have got from the schools over these two years and comparing it with the past three years. So this five years data we are analyzing and if there is a change which is not explained by the scheme, we are going to inquire into that. But as I said and I shared with you, the students getting more than this more than twenty percent students getting even in all five subjects very small. But, but we are trying to keep a tab on that because we are also aware of this apprehension of the schools and the parents that this, with the introduction of CCE there are chances that the academic standards might fall down. These are just apprehensions, but at our end we are trying to keep a tab on that. Data analysis at our level to ensure that the scheme is implemented in a proper way. I would also request and encourage the principals to also do this data analysis at the end, which perhaps we have not been doing so far. As of now, or at best the data analysis that used to happen was this as to how many A1s are there in my school, how many 95 percenters, who is the top, etc. That is a good, that is a good analysis to get the feedback, but Please also see as to how your school system is functioning over a period of last four to five years or is there, is, is there something which is going completely out of hand. Why I am saying that this is going to be extremely important because once these children who are into the change system now, once they appear in class 12 examination or they go beyond that, if we have been doing, if we have been implementing this scheme well, they will definitely do better. But if we are compromising with the assessments and which we will know only once we do a lot of data analysis with the schools, we will be able to take corrective measures during when the time is right rather than regretting about it later on. So I would encourage the principals also to have a look at the data as to how these students are doing. One of the things which all of you could do is to see as how the students who are presently grade 12, how they have done in their grade 11 final examination as compared to their peers in the previous years. Is there something wrong in a particular subject? And we are also trying to collect this data again from our side, but every principal can do it in her or his school to find out if there are a particular subject where the problem is existing and then try to find out why that problem is existing. It is also possible because in some of the places the message has gone that CC means that no, no, no academic activities, it means only uh, co-curricular activities, it means some of the projects have also been understood in a very narrow sense that projects mean something to be done with hand outside the class only, at home only with the help on or copying it from the internet and pasting it in the answer book or copying it from the textbook. Somehow the, the meaning of the project has been taken differently by some schools. So if you do this analysis you will get to know because it may also not be possible for the principal to go to every class every day or to meet every student. But if you are doing this data analysis you will be able to find out as to where this uh, where the problem, if any, is lying. <coughs> As we have also heard about this problem solving assessment, which we have introduced in the second uh, term of uh, class 9 this year, the reason of our introducing this problem solving assessment is twofold. First of all, once we met the teachers across the country, we were made to understand that this new scheme has meant a lot of work 
to the teachers. A lot of work which, which they see as not useful, but of course we were thinking that's a useful work bit because if you have to um, uh, write down the records about different students, naturally you will at, at, by the end of the year you will have a very clear picture about every student that who is there in your class. But the feedback was that this is meaning a lot of work for the teachers, a lot of uh, non-productive work for the teachers. So therefore we thought that if there is an assessment which is done at the level of the country uh, the, that the CBN says in the sense that the CBSE sends the assessments, it is done on a single day in the school and evaluated by the CBSE and that would count towards the last formative assessment of class 9. So in that sense that if you want to do formative assessment, you do it, you can still do it and use it for the purposes of uh, uh, diagnosis and remediation. But as far as weighting is concerned, this uh, will be counted towards the 10% weighting of FA4 and FA3 and FA4 can be combined and the best of the formative assessment, assessment, formative assessment grade would be used for the for counting of FA3. As I said, one of the purposes is to reduce the teacher's work and number two, uh, other purpose was also this, to see, to use this again to moderate the assessments done by different schools if we find some problem existing somewhere. If suppose in a region some school has not done the assessment well, it has inflated the grade, we will be able to use this problem solving assessment which is a common denominator across the schools to moderate the assessments done by that particular school. So this, these are the two main purposes of this thing in addition to encouraging a type of teaching inside the classroom, the learning inside the classroom which is aimed at problem solving and creative and critical thinking. You must have received the circular, you must have seen the sample items who are, which are given there and uh, this is, this will start for class 9th, it is meant for class 9th only but the weightage will be carried forward in class 10th also. So in a sense it is for class 10th also but class 10th does not have to appear in this only if, if they are wanting to improve their performance. It is possible that some of the students might want to improve their performance because it is going to be finally counted towards uh, their final grade. So if they wish to improve those students who are currently in class 9 then uh, uh, those who would be appearing in this problem solving assessment in 2013 in class 9 in 2014 when it happens for the class 9 again the, these students who would have appeared in 2013 they will be able to improve their performance the next year. So this is one uh, uh, change which we have tried to do. Uh, please don't think that uh, we are changing uh, you know, too many things and too fast. All that we are doing is that we are learning from interactions like this and then trying to bring in the changes so that we are, we, you know, we don't lose sight of the main purposes of the reforms. Another thing which we have announced, but it is, it, it will take some time, but I, I, I think it will be useful for uh, uh, you to ponder over it, is assessment of speaking skills uh, in uh, uh, English language, uh, speaking and listening skills. And all this what we are thinking is that though our curriculum document, document till now said that these skills needs to be assessed, but the feedback from the field has been that there it is the, the assessment of speaking and listening skills is happening very rarely. Most of the time since testing is happening of the writing skills and the comprehension skills, the assessment is also limited to that. So therefore we have thought that we will introduce this uh, assessment of uh, speaking and listening skills uh, listening skills in English language and as soon as we are ready we will issue the uh, inform the schools very time but uh, it, 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 it will not be possible for this academic year because it has already started maybe from the next academic year we will announce it very in advance. One more thing that you would have heard is about circular uh, circular has also been issued is about questions which are value based questions and the main purpose of introducing these value based questions has been
to inform the child that when we are talking of values, it is not that we talk of values when we are we are sitting in some class in which everyone is talking about values. We have to realize that the values are everywhere. So therefore, we are trying to integrate these values into the different uh, uh, subject areas, into different content of different subjects. So therefore, this time, um, uh, starting from this session only, in classes 9, 10, 11, 10, 12, there are going to be questions uh, which will be embedded in the context of, a, of those particular subjects and they will be asking the um, values involved in those questions. These questions are not going to be very difficult from the perspective of the child. All that they want you to do is to start a discussion about this in the classroom. A physics teacher or a chemistry teacher or a biology teacher should also be talking about the values when she is teaching these subjects. The child should not think that the biology is something different from ethics, from values. If ethics are involved every in, in every subject, they are they have to be mothers to realize the importance of that. One more thing which you would have heard, I don't know, I would like to definitely seek the uh, uh, feedback of this uh, gathering is uh, our thinking about introducing open book examinations. Uh, I think <laughs> it was uh, it came in the newspapers few a few days back. It is as of now uh, what is being thought is to introduce this in not in this session but from the next session. What type of open book system will be possible that we are discussing? Uh, uh, will it be a typical open book examination in which as many number of textbooks are allowed as a child can bring it? Or it's going to be that you prescribe a textbook, let's say NCRT's textbook is there, you say okay you can get that textbook and answer the question. Whether it will be limited to the entire question paper or only a few uh, uh, questions in the question paper. If it is going to be limited to a few, few questions in the question paper, then we'll, we will be allowing the question, uh, textbook or not. Or it is going to be, as was reported in the uh, newspapers, that a passage is given in advance in the form of a case study or something and the same case study is given in the question paper which is limited to let's say 20% or 30% and then the questions which are going to be applied questions which, do, which are not going to be the direct questions asked on that case study or in case of mathematics it could be like you have been given a passage and the formula etc are given and then you apply those formula uh, which will test your higher order thinking skills. We are discussing that as of, um, and I think by there is a committee working on this, and by the end of December, we will be able to inform the schools as to what types of questions are going to come under that. I would definitely like to seek your frank views on that and suggestions on that. The idea there is that since these examinations have a great potential of changing the way the teaching learning is happening inside the classrooms. So therefore we are wanting to change the examinations so that they positively impact the teaching and learning inside the classroom. Um, uh, uh, so I would see um, the response from all of you on this. When we have met the schools, one of the two more important things which are uh, most of the times being discussed is, one is about formative assessment, once we are talking of continuous and comprehensive evaluation, is the formative assessment. We have to understand this very clearly that formative assessment is the major purpose or the main purpose of the formative assessment is to give feedback to the teacher and to the student. It is it should not be converted into weekly tests without any discussion on that. You do assessments continuously and then give the feedback. If you are just assessing the child, giving him some mark 5 out of 10 on different unit tests which happen every Monday or every Wednesday, that is definitely not the idea. Idea is to diagnose the problem and then give the feedback, which requires 
a lot of effort on the part of the teacher. It is easier said than done and it will require a great motivation on the part of the principals also to motivate their teachers so that they do it in that way only. And therefore we are saying that the major purpose of formative assessment is to diagnose the, the strengths and weaknesses of the child and accordingly do the remediation. For the time being, we are, as we have informed the schools, that we are also counting the best of the formative assessments for the final grade. The purpose there is that when we uh, discuss it with the parents, it was there was an apprehension that if these are not counted, since we are shifting from one type of system to another type of system, it will not be taken seriously by the teacher or by the student or by the parent. They, they confess to ourselves. So therefore we thought that uh, by all the formative assessments are used for diagnosis and remediation, the best of it is used for the purposes of the final way. But the feedback that we have got because this was the feedback when we got, when we were analyzing the evidences which we got, was that the schools are using all the formative assessments for the purposes of counting the final grade. They are taking the average of all the formative assessment tasks which are given to the students. So this I am sure will uh, be rectified during this year and we will be able to use the formative assessments mainly for the purposes of diagnosis and remediation. Another thing in the formative assessment which we have got to know from in analyzing the evidences is that most of the tasks which are given under the formative assessments are pertaining to one particular subject only. That if, if suppose there is a task which is concerning English language, then there is another task which is, which is concerning social sciences, similarly mathematics. And this is leading to number one, more pressure on the student, they record the formative assessment task almost every day. Pressure of the teachers also in terms of evaluation and then they are feeling that they don't have time to actually teach. So here there are two things involved. Number one, we need to have the formative assessment tasks which are connected. Which are, there are one task which could be given to the students and these tasks then could be used for assessments by the teachers who are teaching two different subjects. And that will reduce the pressure on the child as well as on the teacher. How this is to be done, I would request you that there are formative assessment manuals of CBSC. We have produced 10 such manuals. Those of you who have seen it, I think you would may share it with others. It is available in the CBSC's headquarters. It is available in the CBSC's regional office. It is also available on the CBSC's website. You can download it and use it. As to how these are to be done, but I am just highlighting it here because the principles are present that please ensure that there is a proper planning between different subject teachers so that you have formative assessment tasks which are not only for one subject but we are which are addressing different subjects at the same time. Another thing is that we have also seen and this again came in the evidences that we collected was that that most of the tasks are being given to be done at home. Still the old practice of teaching it with a textbook and then giving formative assessment tasks as tests or assignments outside the classroom, it is still there. And this is coming out of the evidences that we have got. We have been uh, um, uh, uh, telling in the past and you can see it in the website also that this teaching and assessment has to go hand in hand. And assessment does not always mean that you have to close the textbook and then say that, okay, now the assessment starts. It also does not mean that first I have to complete my chapter and then only the testing can start. The two other things can go simultaneously. And again, for this purpose, I'll, I'll refer you to this formative assessment manuals which we have prepared. And it is not that you follow those manuals these, those manuals will give you the ideas about different, the way it is possible that your teachers can come up with their own tasks which are meeting these 
um, objectives. As far as uh, summative assessments are concerned, I think there are, you would have also known. We had this scheme of giving these three options to the schools, is that either you choose the board's question paper as it is, or you do this mixing and matching, or we said that you can make your own question papers based on the blueprint which is given there. But the feedback has been that very few schools have opted to make their own question papers. I would encourage the schools to make their own question papers because that will build the capacity of the schools, that will give them more confidence and we firmly believe that a child has to be tested when you are testing his achievement on a curriculum in the context in which he is studying. If a child is, is in, 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 in indoor, if we test him in the context of New Delhi, I think we are not being fair to him. Especially when we are talking of what he knows, we are not talking of what he does not know. I would therefore encourage the uh, principals to, in, to, 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 uh, uh, in, to, to encourage, to motivate their teachers to make their own question papers based on the design uh, and the blueprint of the board. That will give them also more confidence and that will be in the interest of the school also. In this you would have seen that now from the next term, that is the second term, uh, for class 9th, we have said that there are not going to be any blueprint of the question paper. By blueprint I mean that we say that from a particular unit, 2 marks MCQ type, from another unit, 5 marks long answer type, that we are going to do away with. The idea there is again because uh, despite our shifting from one uh, examination to the continuous and competency evaluation, we still realized that the, still the teachers and the, everyone, including the students, were looking forward to having the sample question papers. You know, you let the, the, the session starts in April, from June and July you start getting these queries when the sample question paper is going to come. So we have decided from the next term, there is not going to be any sample question paper. Only the sample items we are going to give, that these are the items which are sample items, but no blueprint as to how many marks are going to come of which type from which unit. Because otherwise, again the teaching happens uh, in accordance with that design only and which again um, defeats the purpose of real uh, learning. We will also do this for class 12th from the next academic session. Not, not this examination, not 2014 exam, 13 examination, but from 2014 examination, we have also decided that in 2014, for class 12th also, there is not going to be any simple question paper. There are going to be only question paper design and the sample question items. But as I said, it will be implemented for class 12th from 2014, that is the examination after this examination which we are going to have. What we are also going to do as under summary assessment 2 for class 10 is that as of now we send you a CD in which there are um, question papers and then you do these things. We are <coughs> working on developing a software which those of you who have been interacting with the board would be knowing that we have been claiming this for last so many years that we are going to now give you a question bank instead of question paper bank and out of which a question paper can be generated. But I think that from the summative assessment 2 of this term, the soft, we will give a software to the schools which will enable the schools to make their own unique question paper based on the uh, this question um, bank which is available with us. So that will also remove this problem of the, the, the very small probability which exists now of two schools getting the same question papers. So that, that will happen from the summative assessment too of the coming year. Uh, at the school level to have a exactly same school uh, uh, mobility, so same uh, uh, you know, the stream or same course at the higher education level also. You have to see what are the 
the courses which are closer to that, and it happens in the academic area also. Right? Academics also a child takes psychology, it takes history, it takes physics, chemistry, mathematics. He may finally opt for something else. It's not that he is finding everything out of that. So it was the problem used to exist earlier when the financial market management had three uh, subjects in the package. And because of this, the children were finding it difficult to get uh, these courses counted. Now we have reduced this package of three to a package of two courses so that even if a university is counting these two courses as one course, the student will have enough number of courses to make him eligible to appear to any higher education courses. So, thank you for the second assessment. Please, sir. Uh, it's not that it's based on any particular subject. Hmm? It's not that the children will have to study something. You know, the, the natural question comes, where will I find the material to study for this? It is there in all those five subjects. The context is going to be the five subjects which a child studies in class 9th. Number two, because the second question will the parents come and ask is that where is going to be the where, where where will the school teach about this subject? You know, where is the so that issue of time level? So there is no time. It's basically it is in it will drive the teaching and learning in other subjects. If the those if the school is doing well, if the school is teaching properly the other subjects, the children will automatically do well here. Yeah. The context is going to be the verbal abilities, comprehension and the quantitative abilities.